So you asked about what else is going to happen. Um, every six months, I oscillate. So we're on a, it's an even odd oscillation. <laughs> so at the moment, the gap between the frontier models, of which there are yeah. now only three, I'll review who they are, and everybody else, appears to me to be getting larger. Six months ago, I was convinced that the gap was getting smaller. So I invested lots of money in the little companies. Now I'm not so sure. <laughs> and I'm talking to the big companies, and the big companies are telling me that they need 10 billion, 20 billion, 50 billion, 100 billion. They're Stargate is a, what, 100 billion, right? They're very, very hard. I talked, Sam Altman is a close friend. He believes that it's going to take about 300 billion, maybe more. I pointed out to him that I'd done the calculation on the amount of energy required. And I, and I then, in the spirit of full disclosure, went to the White House on Friday and told them that we need to become best friends with Canada. Because <laughs> Canada has really nice people, helped invent AI, and lots of hydropower. Mm -hmm. Because we as a country do not have enough power to do this. The alternative is to have the Arabs fund it. And I like the Arabs personally. Uh, I spent lots of time there, right? But they're not going to adhere to our national security rules, whereas Canada and the U.S. are part of a triumvirate where we all agree. So security. these $100 billion, $300 billion data centers, electricity starts becoming the scarce resource. Well, yeah. well or, and, and by the way, if you follow this line of reasoning, why did I discuss CUDA and NVIDIA? If $300 billion is all going to go to NVIDIA, you know what to do in the stock market. <laughs> okay. That's not a stock recommendation. I'm not a licensed. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, part of it, so we're going to need a lot more chips, but yeah. Intel is getting a lot of money from the U.S. government, ah. uh, AMD, um, <laughs> and, and, they're, and they're trying to build, you know, fabs in, in Ra Korea. Raise your hand if you have an Intel computer in your, <laughs> an Intel chip in any of your computing devices. Okay. So much for the okay. monopoly. <laughs> Well, that, well, that's that's the point, though. They yeah. once did have a monopoly. Absolutely. And Nvidia has a monopoly now. So, are those barriers to entry, like like CUDA? Is that is there something that other? So, I was talking to Percy Percy Lamb the other day. He's switching between TPUs and Nvidia chips depending on what he can get access to. For that's training because models. he doesn't have a choice. If he had infinite money, he would today he would pick the B two hundred architecture out of Nvidia because mm -hmm. it would be faster. Mm -hmm. And, I, and I'm not suggesting, I mean, it's great to have competition. I've yeah, talked to, yeah. to AMD and Lisa Sue at great length. Yeah. They have built a, a thing which will translate from um, this CUDA architecture that you were describing to their own, which is called Rockham. It doesn't quite work yet. They're working on it. Um, you were at Google for a long time, and uh, they invented the transformer architecture. Peter, Peter. Um, it's all Peter's fault. Th thanks to... Uh, to <laughs> Brilliant people over there like Peter and Jeff Dean and, and everyone. Um, but now it doesn't seem like they're, they, they've kind of lost the initiative to open AI. And even the last leaderboard I saw, Anthropics, Claude was at the top of the list. Um, I asked Sundar this. He didn't really give me a very sharp mm -hmm. answer. Maybe, maybe you have a, a, a sharper or a more objective uh, explanation for what's going on there. I'm no longer a Google employee. Yes. Um, in the spirit of full disclosure. Um, Google decided that work-life balance and going home early and working from home was more important than winning. <laughs> and the startups, the reason startups work is because the people work like hell. And I'm sorry to be so blunt, but the fact of the matter is if you all leave the university and go found a company, you're not going to let people work from home and only come in one day a week if you want to compete against the other startups. When, when in the early days of Google, Microsoft was like that. Exactly. But now it seems to be... And there's, a, there's a long history of, in my industry, our industry, I guess, of companies winning in a genuinely creative way and really dominating a space and not making this, the next transition. It's very well documented. And I think that the truth is founders are special, the founders need to be in charge. The founders are difficult to work with. They push people hard. Um, as much as we can dislike Elon's personal behavior, look at what he gets out of people. Mm -hmm. uh, I had dinner with him, and he was flying. I was in Montana. He was flying that night at 10 p.m. to have a meeting at midnight with X.ai. Right. Think midnight. about it. I was in Taiwan, different country, different culture. 
And they said that, and this is TSMC, who I'm very impressed with, and they have a rule that the starting PhDs coming out of the, they're good, good physicists, work in the factory on the basement floor. Now, can you imagine getting American physicists to do that? The PhDs? Highly unlikely. Different work ethic. And the problem here, the, the reason I'm being so harsh about work is that these are systems which have network effects. So time matters a lot. And in most businesses, time doesn't matter that much, right? You have lots of time. You know, Coke and Pepsi will still be around and the fight between Coke and Pepsi will continue to go on and mm -hmm. it's all glacial, mm -hmm. right? When I dealt with telcos, the typical telco deal would take 18 months to sign, right? There's no reason to take 18 months to do anything. Get it done. Mm -hmm. it's just, it, it, we're in a period of maximum growth, maximum gain. So, and also it takes crazy ideas. Like when Microsoft did the open AI deal, I thought that was the stupidest idea I'd ever heard. Outsourcing essentially your AI leadership to open AI and Sam and his team. I mean, that's insane. Nobody would do that at Microsoft or anywhere else. And yet today they're on their way to being the most valuable company. They're certainly head to head in Apple. Apple does not have a good AI solution. Mm -hmm.